Hello, my name is Ethan, and I've played Necrons before they were cool. I played them and their codex was this big, and their entire codex was 11 units long. I even had the old battle force. However, no one plays these guys anymore. But noted, I never lost a single game with them, and even though everyone thought they sucked, I was undefeated. No, I have not only played three games. I've played at least 25, probably way more than that. However, now everyone plays these guys. The new guys, the awesome guys, the cheesy guys, whatever you want to call them. These are the new Necrons, also known as Tomb Kings in Space. So, we're going to go over their HQ choices and teach you how to not suck with them in this video. Now, remember, this is a series, and this one happens to be HQ choices. If you're lost, click on any of the links in the sidebar. They will bring you to the other videos, which we will go through elites, troops, heavy support, and even the royal courts. But those are different videos. So, we're going to teach you how to use, first off, Imatech the Stormlord. Now, Imatech has this fancy rule that makes night fighting for you and your opponent for a random game length, basically. It depends on how well you can roll dice, which you probably suck at. So, how that works is, you know, you don't want to inhibit your own shooting that bad. You want an army that has a lot of close combat units, which means raids, you know, Praetorians, Lich Guard, God forbid Blade Ones, don't use those, but I'll explain why in a different video. Just don't do it. <laughs> He's also very expensive, so if you do have this guy, he's probably going to be your only HQ in that list. And he can take a Catacomb Command Barge. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. Do not take him with the Catacomb Command Barge. He sucks with it. So, that's him attack. He's really just based around, you know, close combat elite units and armies and stuff like that. But he is also very expensive. That's very, very important. And his war gear and special rules are completely useless, so never put him into combat. Just keep him in the back of the board zapping stuff with his lightning. Next HQ, Nemesaur Zendrek. Now, he's an interesting one. He's really more of like a... We need a lot of synergy with Nemesaur, because he has the fancy special rule that gives any of your units all these fancy rules and takes away any fancy rules from your enemy. And it can work if you really want, like, something dead with a certain unit. I.e., if you want a Triarch Stalker to have a Strength 9 Multi-Melt of the Tank Hunters against a Land Raider, or you want your Scarabs to be Strength 4, your Wraiths to be Strength 4. Even if you want, like, I don't know, War sites to be strength 8 under Praetorians for Furious Charge. Anything like that, it can help. He isn't that expensive, so you can take a second HQ with him if you desire, which I suggest the next guy, Vargard Obren. Vargard only works with Nemesaur, really, and the main reason is he has a bunch of special rules interacting with him. Like, if Nemesaur gets into close combat, he immediately piles in, and he can teleport anywhere, like, within 6 inches of him and not scatter and stuff like that. On his own, he's actually a pretty beast like thing. He has weapon skill six, a two-up save, and a strength seven war sight that's really nice. Tactics-wise, and how you would honestly use him, I would take a catacomb command barge with Nemesaur, then just have Vargard hijack it so he can fly around and kill stuff with his war sight via sweep attacks until Nemesaur gets assaulted, in which case a special rule like Vargard's duty brings him into that combat and saves his ass, because Nemesaur sucks in close combat, because for some reason he doesn't have a power weapon. But he'll stay alive long enough for Vargard to finish up, because he has a 2-up, 3-up, and Vulnerable. And Vargard has a bunch of special rules that help him in close combat, which we all know, Cleave Encounter Blow. If you don't know it, you suck, read the Codex. Alright, next we have Alumnar Serzaz. Don't use this guy. Done. Next, we have Borakon the Diviner. Borakon the Diviner is an interesting one. He only works with a certain elite choice. Do you know what that elite choice is? It's the Catan Shard. The reason for this is, the Catans can take a power semi-expensive called Writhing Worldscape. This means any terrain on the board that is normally difficult now becomes dangerous. If it's already dangerous, you fail it on a 1 or a 2 instead of just a 1. And Oricon here has a special rule that says all terrain, even open terrain, on the first turn is now difficult terrain. Put 2 and 2 together. Difficult is now dangerous. You're playing against orcs. They have 90 orc boys. They try and move. That's 90 dangerous terrain check checks. Any jump infantry that tries to move that game in difficult terrain. Dangerous. Contend makes them fail it on a 1 or a 2. Wiping out half of a Blood Angel's Assault Squad in one turn. Awesome, you don't even have to do anything. And that, my friends, is Oricon the Diviner. He has some other fancy stuff like Oricon the Empower, but don't use that. It really doesn't do anything. <laughs> Just, even if he is empowered, keep him in the back of the board. He's not going to do much for you. Next dude, we have Enricar the Traveler. I freaking love this guy. Take him as much as you can. Actually, I shouldn't say that anymore, because they nerfed him with the FAQ, because I hate Games Workshop for that. He has one of the coolest abilities in the entire codex, which is called Mind in the Machine. It means if you're within 18 inches of a vehicle and you can draw a line of sight to it, you roll a dice. On a 3-up, you get to take control of all that vehicle's weapons, which means 
if there's a little auto cannon sitting pretty in the back of a Great Knight's, you know, force, and there's a bunch of rhinos like beating the crap out of you in your front lines, because we know Great Knight rhinos are stupid because they have strength six bolters, and I hate them really, really much. You can now take it over on a three up and have them start shooting their own rhinos, and it ignores stunned and shaken. You get to fire all their weapons as if they were stationary, which means if you're playing against Blood Angels and you have a Storm Raven close to you, and you're for some reason in their lines with their Storm Raven and Mephistons in your lines about to charge a precious unit of destroyers and you don't want that to happen, you can take over that Blood Angel Storm Raven and you get to fire, as I said, all of its weapons as if it were stationary. Which means all of its blood strike missiles and all of its multi meltos and all of its assault cannons all going straight at Mephiston and it will kill the crap out of him. He also has a Tachyon Arrow which is strength 10 AP1 unlimited range and is okay but it's only one shot per game. And a War Sight. Things you should know about Anrakar, if you're taking him please take at least one unit of Immortals because he gives them a free upgrade called Fury and Eternal which means he turns them to basically Immortals with Furious Charge and Counterattack. Semi-useful, it makes them a bit, little bit more survivable and can give them a little bit more punch if they decide to charge something for some reason, which if you are charging something as a Necron player without that's not Scarabs or Wraiths, you're doing something horribly, horribly wrong. You should probably not play Necrons. Other ways you could use him? You used to be able to put him in a command barge and fly up to stuff and take it over and shoot stuff, but according to the FAQ, you can't do that anymore. It's the Games Workshop FAQ. Go check it out. Go check out the 53-page long thread on DACA about why you can and can't do it. You'll have a great time there. <clears throat> he also has counterattack and furious charge, which means you can potentially get this guy in combat, because if you charge someone, you now have a strength 8 foresight, which if you can somehow survive, like getting the crap beaten out of you by halberds, you can kill paladins really fast with your strength 8 foresight. And everyone hates paladins. Yeah, isn't that right? <sighs> Next dude, we have Trees in the Infinite. Honestly, he's not the most useful, but he's at least somewhat useful as opposed to a Lumnar Serzaz, who you should just never use, ever in your entire life. And I'm not gonna lie, I cannot give you much advice for this guy, mainly because he has the stupidest special rules ever. He has excellent, another piece for the collection, which means he's scoring. He has surrogate host, which makes him nearly impossible to kill at the expense of every time he makes his reanimation on a two up, he takes place of one of your cryptex or I think it's like Lich Guard or another normal Necron Lords, even your other Necron Overlords, which is Vertu advice, if you for some reason take this guy, don't take a Necron Overlord then give him 500 points of war gear. Because then if he dies and comes back up, he has to take that guy's place if you roll for him. And that's all your war gear down the drain. Because now you have to take with, you know, Treason the Infinite's Empathetic Obliterator and Mind Shackle Scarabs. When you gave your Necron Overlord all this stuff instead, but now he doesn't have it. So tactics wise, Honestly, I would say not to use Trazen. That's the best tactic I could give you, because he does not fit well with any lists that have been discovered yet. I mean, scoring, that's alright. If you want to put him with, like, a Lich Guard unit, then you want like them to be able to score, because they're going to be in your opponent's front lines. That's how I would use him, and I do pretty well. The only problem is, if he does die, and he comes back up, if you have a Cryptek sitting in the back of your board shooting lances, and he's suddenly not with his Lich Guard unit, because you rolled for a Cryptek to see who he randomly replaces, you're screwed. So, I avoid HQs like this in general. Anything that's random, I would say avoid. Like, you know, I'm gonna mention them. Alumnar Sarazaz's mechanical augmentation has to randomly pick, a, like, Immortals or Warriors. Don't take them, because it's something random. Like, just anything random, don't take it, you know. You know, take the Stormlord's Blood Swarm as a, random, like, random effect, but no one uses Flayed Ones anyway, so... It doesn't really matter much. <sighs> and those are all the named Necron HQs. In the next video, we're going to go over the two unnamed ones, being the Necron Overlord and the Destroyer Lord. So click the link that will undoubtedly be on your screen, a big giant red letters or some transparent box, somewhere like in this general area, or here, or here, or here, I don't know. Click on it and it'll bring you to that video. And I will see you there and I'll be sure to yell at you and tell you how much you suck at playing this game and what you should do.